All right, welcome back. Um, let's uh, talk about Press Freedom Day. Uh, just a quick statistic. Nigeria has been ranked 120 out of 180 countries in the 2021 World Press Freedom Index, compiled by Reporters Without Borders. I'm joined here by Funke Treasure, who's a journalist. Thanks for being here today. Thanks very much, Ebuka. Is that a statistic that we should be excited about? You know, we hear that, oh, this is a safe place. Government continues to talk about the fact that journalists are safe in Nigeria. You don't hear what's happening in like war-torn countries where journalists are killed or in countries where there's dictatorships. Are journalists, is 120 out of 180 countries a fair analysis of Nigeria's situation today? Is it fair? I don't think it's um, fair, and I don't think it's fair on, on the, journal, the Nigerian journalist. I think it's a poor uh, rating for us. Um, and I think we can do better. Okay. Uh, given that um, this is a democracy and uh, Naturally, a democracy should give you freedom of expression, the people freedom of expression, and then by extension, the media, uh, the, the, the latitude yeah. to report, to publish without control, without restrictions, and without censorship. Is this ever going to be a thing, though? Because as much as, uh, you know, a lot of things have changed with democracy, the Freedom of Information Bill became an act and is now law and all of that. There's the constant talk about the military hangover you know, where we had so many years where being a journalist was literally like a dangerous job. And government sort of psyche continues to go that way where, you know, there are certain things the press cannot just say. Is the military hangover still a problem with regards to how journalists operate? I and think is it it's some, what can we do differently about that? I think it's still a problem because what we've seen is a removal of one gab for the other. We've found um, military um, rulers back in civilian clothing. And really, if we're, if we're, if we're jettisoning with immediate alacrity, which used to be the phrase, then everything yeah. was with immediate alacrity. And when you see when you see a change of garments, it doesn't necessarily mean a change of style or change of structure or you know or, or mode of operation. So that's what on one side. On the other side, it's just unfortunate that this is the same Nigeria in the past, which was a beacon of hope in the African continent in terms of um, um, in terms of intervention um, in other countries. I mean, look at what we did with South Africa in the time of apartheid yeah. and, and so on and so forth. And look at how we have worked with eminent journalists in the past. I mean, we're talking of Tribune, we're talking of Iwe Royi back in the days, we're talking of a crop of formidable, credible journalists, people like Oshoba in his days as, as a journalist, in the days of sketch, yes. you know, punch and all of those uh, uh, titles. And, and, and then again, the broadcast uh, journal, uh, journalism sector as well. And you find people, people who covered war. We were not... Um, gagged. We were not gagged. We enjoyed our work. We were thrilled by the, the, the prospect of reporting what's going on and holding government accountable. Um, I mean, we've come a long way from the decree four of yesteryears, uh, but then we got cornered by poverty. Yeah. So poverty has been so weaponized in our society such that when you do not effectively re remunerate people for the work they do, then they begin to have... Look for ways. Yeah, you know, look for alternative ways um, to make ends meet. The media is a reflection of the society. It's a reflection of the Nigeria of today. So you cannot uh, remove media men, media professionals from, from the, the economy. From, from the economy and the society in which they operate. Yes. So, so that, that's another one. Yeah, because that, that's one of the accusations or allegations that, you know, journalists today continue to have, you know, led against them, where it's like, oh, reporting now is no longer about what's real. It's about who's paying the most. And I think that's one toga that the Nigerian journalist continues to carry. Um, but also from governments, you know, especially with this administration, we've heard a lot of allegations about how the media is the reason why so many things have become the way they are. They say the media sometimes is biased, or you've reflected Nigeria a certain way that investment is no longer coming in. Do you think these allegations are fair? Because to be I fair, the media is the voice of the nation sometimes. Have you, on, have you demarketed Nigeria, you think? 
The media is an independent monitor of power. We ought to um, report the successes and the failures. Apart from holding the government accountable, we tell it as it is. We tell the facts. We verify the truth, journalistic truth. And if, for instance, airlines are saying, look, aviation fuel is this high. It's, it's, we can't afford it. And we're going to down okay. tools. And then we report that. That's not demarketing Fair Nigeria. Enough. Sorry, we're joined now by via Zoom by the editor of Premium Times, Nicolas Ibekwe. I just want to get his perspective on this. Thanks a lot for joining us, Nicolas. Um, a lot of what she said, I know you've heard them, you know, about the reputation of journalism here in Nigeria and how, you know, that has probably affected the way journalists work in this part of the world. How are we going to get out of this, especially with what she said about weaponizing poverty and how it affects the job of journalists? I mean, um, thanks for having me, Ebuka, but um, how are we going to get um, away from weaponizing? See, um, talking about press freedom, and, and, and what I used to say is that the media is not just free because they are allowed to write whatever they want to write. It is the, like in Nigeria, you can write whatever you want to write, but um, it is what happens after uh, you have written what you've published your piece that matters. So weaponizing poverty in the sense that um, the Nigerian media basically is not properly financed. We don't see a lot of investors come into uh, the media to, um, because the media has to be independent. But if you look at the Nigerian media today, you'll find that most of the media houses are either owned or affiliated to politicians. So when you are owned or affiliated to, to a politician or to a corporate um, uh, executive, there is so much you can, I mean, there's a limit to what you can do yeah. as, a, as an independent um, uh, media. Because do you want to write, I mean, somebody once told me that um, if he owns a newspaper, there's no way that newspaper is going to write anything critical about him because he's the one who pays the salary. So yeah. when you have such a mindset, and, I'm, and honestly, you cannot blame the person because that's where they are coming from. Because So the media has to be independent. Look at Nigeria uh, today. When last do you hear anybody investing in a, in a, in a media startup, proper investing? I mean, the Nigerian, the Nigerian newspaper has basically been financed or run by grants by, uh, from foreign organizations. But you can you find out that these grants are not enough. If you really want to have a very free media, we need to have people who want to put money in the media and who want to stay back and say, I'm putting my money here. This is a business. I want to see you run, do your thing, do what you should do. For instance, if you, if you um, um, open a, 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 a shop where pastries um, are made <laughs> and you put money in that, you don't go back and say, oh, okay, um, you're making pastries, but today I want you guys to start... Um, um, doing something away from food or start uh, doing something different totally away from making food. It's going right. to be strange because the people you have hired are chefs and they don't probably don't know how to uh, be mechanic or how to fix okay. cars or something. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. I mean, I just realized we've run out of time, but I mean, we have to continue this conversation some other time because this is a very important conversation to have. I am worried because I hear a lot of talk about, you know, journalism is under threat, especially print journalism, which has always been the beacon of hope for a lot of people. And maybe we'll have to get you back so that we can have an extensive conversation on how the future of the media in Nigeria looks. Uh, thank you very much, Nicholas. Thank you very much, Funke Treasure, for being here today. Thank you. But like I always say, you can follow the conversation on social media, on Twitter. Please use the hashtag Robbie Minds when you send us a message. I'll see you next Sunday.